Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. One more time. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's good to see you all here. Welcome again to Washington Adventist University. This is the music festival, the Friday night Vespers program. Um, we're just pleased to welcome you here on the campus, those of you parents who are visiting. And of course, we have a number of academies that are here. You know, every year, well, not every, well, every year we have a music festival. And um, this year we have students from both um, that, that sing in both choirs, that play in the bands, and play in the string orchestras from all the different uh, schools who are invited. And we're so pleased to hear from some of the groups that are here with us this evening. So before we get into uh, the program for this evening, before we start, I'm going to invite up our religious vice president, Ms. Tiara Best, to open us up with a word of prayer. Are you okay? Yeah, I broke my ankle last year too, very clumsy. So <laughs> let us pray. Dear Holy Father, Lord, we just thank you for this week. Thank you for getting everybody here safely, Lord. Just bless our talents tonight. May those who are listening be blessed and those who are performing. Lord, just lift their praises to you through singing, through playing, Lord. And we just thank you for these gifts. Thank you for the gift of music, Lord. Um, it's one of the beauties of this world out of the many, many things you've made, including ourselves. Bless us tonight. Keep us. In your name we pray. Amen. Now, before we get into our music, I just wanted to share a, a Vesper's thought with you. There is a narrative that takes place or a story that takes place in the book of Luke, chapter 15. There are three parables in that chapter, and one of them is very well known. It's called the prodigal son. I've always thought that this is such an interesting parable because there are so many lessons, so many um, nuggets that you can get from this, from this parable. From those of you who may not know it, or even if you do know it, just a quick overview. There is a father who has two sons. One son says, I want everything that's mine, demands it from his father. He takes it and he leaves. He goes and does whatever he wants with his money and all his resources. He spends it. He has a great time, does everything he wants to do until he runs out of everything. And then he finds himself, because he's poor, because he's broke, he finds himself in the pig pen, working at a farm. How many of you have been to a farm? It has a certain aroma, right? As soon as you get out the car, you smell it. He found himself at a farm in a pig pen, feeding the pigs. And then a moment comes where uh, he comes to his senses. The Bible says in... Uh, verse 17, when he came to his census, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And I am here starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, father, I have sinned in, uh, sins against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. He was faced with a decision to make. He was in a situation. He was in a rut. He had hit a wall. He had come to grips with reality and decided to make a 180 turn and head back to his father. This is important. This is significant for a couple of reasons. Because when we come to grips with who we are and what, what we have done wrong in our lives, and we, offer, we ask God for repentance, repentance isn't just asking God for forgiveness. It's not just saying I'm sorry. It's not just apologizing. But it's physically turning in a 180 direction and going in the opposite direction. That's the sign of true repentance. And that's what he did. He went back to his father and his father saw him a long way off and he wrapped his arms around him and he showed him all the love and he threw a party for him. But contrast that with someone else, his other brother, his other brother who was outside And his brother, this is what the Bible says in, in, chapter, in um, verse 28. It says, the older brother became angry uh, and he refused to go in. He heard the music. He heard the dancing. He heard the celebration. He refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I can celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours who has squandered your property, property comes home you kill the fattened calf for him and listen to the father's response 
My son, the father said, you are always with me and everything I have is yours, but we have to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and now he is found. I've often wondered, Jesus is brilliant, number one, and he's intentionally using a play of words when, he calls, when we call this a pro, uh, the parable of the prodigal son, son being singular. Which son is he referring to? One son needed forgiveness and made the decision to turn. The other son saw the father was talking to him, and the, son, the second son never made it into the party. Which one is the prodigal son? This is the element, this is the nugget here that I love the most about this parable. Regardless of whichever one you are, maybe you have gone astray. Maybe you have been accustomed to doing things that were not in accordance to what you believe, that go against your faith. Maybe you're in the, 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 the habit of doing these wrong things but then you turn and you offer yourself up for forgiveness. Or maybe you don't understand that you do need forgiveness and you hear like the older son. What I love about this story is that it ends there. It ends with Jesus outside the party. It stand, ends with Jesus, I'm sorry, it ends with the father standing with the son outside of the party. Jesus is open to dialogue. Jesus is open to communication. He's open to the son's questions. He never condemns the son for asking questions. He never looks down on him or says, you shouldn't, you just don't have enough faith. You don't know the prophecies. You don't understand the beliefs. No, Jesus is open to dialogue with the older son. And for some of us, Jesus is standing outside the party with us, waiting to go in. The end of the story is open-ended, I think, on purpose, because I, want, I, I believe that Jesus um, shared the story to give us a moment to pause and wonder, where are we in our life journey, in our experience? We're very thankful for the opportunity that he has given to us and that he continually extends to us, whether we're inside or outside of the party. <laughs> Because Jesus does like to party. If you leave the scriptures, he likes to go inside of parties. So with that in mind, um, I pray. I pray, that you offer, um, I, I pray that you offer your hearts, offer our hearts and our minds back to God. And that we do take into account, especially us students, because God does hold us accountable. We sing a lot of songs about love and grace and compassion. And God does have those things. But he does want us to do the right thing. When we hit that wall in the pit, he wants us to make the decision to turn the other way and come back to him. This is what we'll ask and this is what we pray for. So if you join me in prayer, and then we'll begin our program this evening. Father in heaven, we thank you that you will never give up on us and that you love us and that you care for us and that your arms are always open and the invitation is always there. And you're ready to stand with us as we make steps towards coming back towards you. Now, as we begin this evening, again, with singing and worship and praise and, and music and our gifts that you gave us, we pray that you join us, be with all the ensembles, all the instrumentalists, all the singers, and we pray that we're blessed by the music, um, by our time together, is what we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hailing all the way from Columbia, Maryland. Somebody say Columbia, Maryland. They had to book a flight. I'm joking. They we want to welcome up, if you join me in welcoming up to the platform here, we have the Athleton Adventist Academy, led by Miss Beatrice Taylor. They're going to bring for us two selections at this time.
Can we give Athleton one more round of applause? Beautiful, 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 beautiful. I'd also like to invite up now Highland View Academy, led by David Nino. They have a, a wonderful music program up there, of course, as well. And uh, we'll be hearing from their strings.
One more time for Highland View Academy. Now, coming all the way from Orlando, Florida. They went to the airport to get here. <laughs> and we're very grateful, very grateful to have um, the Forest Lake Academy strings and brass with us for this music festival. We've been trying to make this happen for a while and they've been able to come um, to past festivals, but now they were able to bring two, two ensembles. So we will hear two selections from um, Forest Lake Academy.
We're gonna need to change our tithing to all hail the power. We show some more appreciation to Forest Lake Academy, to their band, to their concert wins, and to their brass ensemble. Excellent, excellent, excellent music. I would like to invite um, up to the platform at this time the Blue Mountain Academy Choir, um, <laughs> directed by Trina Murphy. And I would like to give them a warm welcome as they make their way up to see our two selections. the awakening um, and just imagine a world without music and that's the way it starts it starts by saying you know I dreamed a dream that there was no music there was no steeples um, ringing there was no no music and then all of a sudden awake um, we awake and we realize we're in the world where there's beautiful music and I've been so blessed tonight
Wasn't that lovely? Mm. Thank you, Blue Mountain Academy. Let music live, and God shall wipe away those tears from our eyes. Looking forward to that day. We want to and welcome at this time uh, Spring Valley Academy, who has traveled just across the way from Ohio, from Dayton, Ohio. They have three groups, no, two groups who are with us. Their choir is with us. I believe their choir is going to start. And then we have a student who will be playing the flute, Noah, um, as a second selection. And then we're going to end with their brass ensemble led by Donald Huff. Can you please welcome Spring Valley Academy?
One more time. Can we hear it for Spring Valley Academy, please? Hmm. Just excellent. Excellent, excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, some would say that this school has had to travel the farthest, um, but that's not true. They, live, they, 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 they go to school right down the street. I would like to welcome Tacoma Academy to the stage.
Thank you, Tacoma Academy Corral and Tacoma Academy Camerata for those two selections. Can you join me? I'm going to ask these people to stand. Uh, Beatrice Taylor, David Nino, <laughs> Tom Togoski, uh, Trina Murphy. Don and stay standing. Stay standing, please. D Christy Doria, Donald Huff. and Lulu Mufumbu. Can you all please stand? Please remain standing. <laughs> please remain standing, please remain standing. We are so grateful for all of the hard work that you do that nobody sees behind closed doors, all of the, all of the uh, support that you get from um, your administrators, your colleagues, we're so thankful for bringing your students here to the campus, and we understand the journey that you're on, and God has placed you to be the spiritual and musical leaders in their lives, and we're just thankful for you. So we want to acknowledge you publicly and say thank you for all of your hard work. Now, before we pray, before we pray, I, I will ask that, can you just give a round of applause for all of the Academy students who performed this evening? As many of you know, the festival continues tomorrow morning. The choir will be here singing for the 11 o'clock worship service at 8.30 in the morning. Pray, pray for us, pray for us. We'll be here at 8.30 warming up for the 11 o'clock service. And then in the afternoon at 4 p.m., we'll have uh, presentations from the, the festival choir, from the festival string ensemble, and from the festival um, concert winds. And we have a number of scholarships to hand out as well. We're very thankful for that. I'll invite you to stand as I invite um, Ms. Daniela Cruz to come up, one of our student leaders who is a theology major from, and also the youth director here at Sligo Church to give us our closing prayer. All right, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this opportunity to uplift you and honor you with beautiful music, God. I pray that the sweet aroma of our voices and of the instruments reached you, God, and it warmed your heart. God, thank you for all these students that were willing to sing their hearts out for you, God. I pray for the conductors and their teachers that were putting so much effort in them. I pray they continue to bless them in their ministry of teaching other people how to praise you in beautiful ways, God. I pray that you be with each individual here as they go home safely, and I pray that you protect them, God. We love you so much. In your name we pray, amen.